Hi, this is Adam from Small Town Machine Shop with a quick little video here about wiring drum switches or wiring stuff in general. Now, drum switches confuse a lot of people. And, you know, when you look in the cap, you know, unless they're doing three phase applications, it always seems like they never have your exact motor thing in there. And this is the same for, here's the instructions to another drum switch. So, this is the instructions for this one. What we need to know is this. Forward, off, and reverse. Right here, labeled drum switch, is one, two, three, four, five, six. These are the six connection points you see in here. These are the four wires that are in the motor. The ones that are already in there that need to be hooked to select points on the motor connections. That's what this box is. And this is how they're wired inside the motor I'm using. This is the incoming power cord. Now, this is wiring it for 220. So there's going to be two holes for the two power leads. Obviously, ground everything. So, and making a little setup like this, it really helps you visualize what's going on. It can really help you solve you know the riddle of how to put it together now if you guys still aren't comfortable after this video uh feel free to email me a picture of your motor's wiring setup and the picture of your switch and, and i'll help you out as much as i can a lot of drone switches are actually two l's and you can do a lot more switching with those but for what i'm doing for my setup I only need to swap two leads, so this switch just goes across and this way, perfectly fine. So, we'll start right here. For my motor, for 220, two of the motor leads go to three for now. So, the colors I'm using, except for the power, will represent the actual wiring of the motor. So there's a yellow. I mean red and yellow. Okay, those will stay there. Those don't need to be switched. Those are just permanent. Now, for three, for 220, the, uh, for standard rotation, the black wire goes there. And a blue wire it was here. That poked in there. Get a longer blue wire here. Get in there. Okay. Those are the four colored wires that are already in the motor. And now they're all going to their proper leads. The connection points. So now we get to the incoming power cord. These two. 220, so we have two legs. One goes to number one, which is back behind here. So go ahead. Hook him up. Now let me get a shorter one. On this setup, this wire is gonna go directly to the motor. It's, I'm just going to break one leg of the 220. I know some of you don't like that, but bear in mind, a machine like that, I keep unplugged when I'm not using it. And also, if you're ever going to work on something, you're going to unplug it. Do you work on a light socket before you just flipping the switch off? No, you flip the breaker. So if I ever work on it, I'm going to unplug it. The other power wire needs to go to four. But, we're going to break it, so it's going to go to this terminal, we'll make it go there, because on this switch, no matter what position you go, forward or reverse, 5 and 6 always switch. So that is going to break the leg, 
that goes between here and four. This shows the connection right there. I'm actually pretty proud of this jig for how crude it is. I was gonna make one with lights and all that, but this this works out good. Okay, so there we go. Right now we have power going to terminal one on the motor through here. And this is broken when it's in off. Terminal four. Now just hooking it up like this, it'll run in forward. But for this particular motor, we need to swap four and three to uh, make it go. So what we do is we run four over to the switch. Okay, so now it's going to go through the switch before it goes to the motor. And with this guy. It's going to go, we have a longer wire here, sorry, sorry, sorry. It's going to go here to three, okay? So now obviously we need to reconnect these to the motor. So, one, it's going to go in here, to spot three. Old things coming apart. It's anarchy. Okay, there we go. And then we're going to connect terminal four to spot four. Okay, so now as our directions go in forward running, one and two and three and four are connected. So put our staples in. This is showing how they're connected right now with the switch. In the forward position. From the motor, the blue wire is coming up, jumping over to the blue, going to spot three. It's coming out of the black, to spot three, continuity is jumping it over to spot four. This will make the motor run forward. Now in this switch, when you flip it to the reverse position, it flip-flops those positions. So pull the two staples out. So now that one is in control. Now we're like this. The blue wire is turning into the black wire. So the motor lead has been swapped to position four. And the black wire is going here and is being swapped to the blue lead going to position three. And this will reverse the motor. So when you're just swapping two wires, you can use just a three position or three pull switch like this. If you had to swap more, you would need a switch that had eight, and there'll be two, you'll see two L's in there. But for the motor I'm using, with the setup I'm using, and of course, again, there'll be a ground wire from there, and everything will be grounded. But I don't want to add any more wires into it, and these whites would not be the power wires. So, to recap, these ones are solid from the motor to the motor connections. These two wires will run to the drum switch. One power wire will run to the drum switch. And then from the drum switch out, there'll be the power wire that's broken right here. These two wires will go here, either side. That black wire will go there, blue wire there. Then opposite black wire there, blue wire. And the other power wire is going to go there. And this other power one will be directly to terminal one on the motor. So we'll be breaking this leg to get the motor to run. So making a setup like this, this uh, crude little box with holes poked in it, really helps to visualize 
the pathways that things are taking. And I've done this before with much more complicated stuff with, uh, you know, on V drives, there's all the extra wires for remote starts and all that. This is a good way, just cut some extra wire and you can just see how everything is running. So yeah, I really hope that helps. Again, if you have any questions about wiring drum switches and motors, uh, let me know and I'll give you my email address and I'll help you out as much as I can. This is Adam from Small Town Machine Shop. Please comment, like, and subscribe, and thanks for watching.